When it comes to making deals, are the Oakland A's simply wash, rinse, and repeat? You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, it's another episode of Locked on A's. This will be the first episode where we can actually say who the World Series champions are. And I'm not going to tell you yet, but I will in just a minute. Got to let you know that today's episode is brought to us by FanDuel. Uh, FanDuel wants you to know that you can make every moment more. And right now, if you're a new customer, new, get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, visit fanduel.com slash locked on and you can get started. Hey, I'm Wayne Coy, host of Locked On A's. And uh, as you can see there on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, the uh, guest this episode is a guy with the same last name because we're related. Hey, Ian. Hey, what's up, man? Good to be back. Yeah, nice to have you back. So you're, you're uh, mobile today, right? You're in your car? Yeah, just got done working and no rest for the weary, man. We're right on it. Let's go. I love it. I call him, but just so you know, Ian lives in Iowa and I called him up and I'm like, hey, you want a podcast with me? We got some interesting stuff to talk about. And uh, he's like, sure, but I'm not home yet. I said, well, let's just do it from the car. <laughs> Probably better lighting anyway. What's that? Who's that? Oh, Bill O'Reilly. That's who I was thinking of. We'll do it live. You know, that thing. The we'll infamous do it live. clip. <laughs> yeah, that was a great one. Um, okay, so we yeah, we want to talk about uh, the A's, of course. But before we get to that, and we will end up circling back, you watch how we do this. Don't try this at home, by the way. Um, we, have a, we have a World Series champion. It only took, uh, what, four games? Five games. And, five games, yeah. yeah, and the champion is the Texas Rangers. Surprise, surprise, not really. <laughs> and uh, Ian, you kind of called that. What? What made you think the Rangers were the squad? I mean, I, I think that top to bottom, they were kind of the superior team. The Diamondbacks got hot. They kind of shocked the world just getting to where they were. Um, I didn't call the games. I mean, I, I agreed, so I can't take credit. But uh, Tanner, who was on the podcast last time I was on, uh, he said that it, he actually called the amount of games, too. He, he said to be not a sweep, but probably over in five the gentleman sweep, if you will. Uh, and that's about right. I think I said, I, I, I think you're right on. Uh, but yeah, that, I would have said five, no more than six for sure. But I just don't, I don't think that they, uh, they were ready, you know, uh, they're still a, a year or two away, but a good, exciting young team. And I think they're going to be back in the playoffs again for the foreseeable future. Well, that Alec Thomas error certainly didn't help tonight, that's for sure. But that's youth, right? I mean, it, uh, it does eventually, you know, the cream rises to the top. And boy, do we see that. Corey Seager with the MVP, and they win five to nothing tonight. Nathan Nivaldi could, I mean, that game could have easily been one to nothing. I mean, he just, right. gosh, he's good. His postseason yeah, record is nuts, too. And he took a little while to get there, too. I mean, he was kind of a guy that, that Boston was sort of not really sure on for the longest yeah. time. And right. you know, that's that pitching just tends to get better. Like, it's kind of like boxing. Like, you don't really hit your prime until you're 30, I don't think. Really? Well, now you tell me that. I got a fantasy team where everybody's under the age of 30. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine for position players and, and hitters, for sure, but. Yeah, you uh, think pitching, pitcher, you pitchers think, take a minute. Yeah, 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 for sure. So out of everybody that you saw on that big stage, who were you most impressed by? Uh, gosh, that's really tough. Uh, probably kind of the opposite direction of the pitching. Evan Carter, uh, man, did he arrive in a big way. Uh, I had the foresight to pick him up in our Dynasty League team, so uh, he will be, when you say, is this guy available? Maybe, likely, it, it, probably not. <laughs> no, not after the World Series, of course. But it is funny no. because 
uh, you know me, I like my prospects, right? So I'm, I'm reading about Evan Carter and I thought, you know what? He's probably worth a gamble. Let me go grab him. And I went and I saw you had him already. I was like, yeah, you son of a, wow. <laughs> so how'd you find out about him? Well, I, uh, kind of survey the rankings a couple of times throughout the year and look at the, the prospect current prospect rankings are the latest ones and see who's rostered and who isn't, you know, I also look at the lineups around them too. So if you have an outfield young outfield prospect, who's surrounded by Corey Seager and, and Adoles Garcia and all these other guys that are, you know, huge run producing guys. I mean, he's got protection in the lineup. He's got a little power to him anyway. So, uh, you know, he's going to, he's going to see some pitches. So that's important right. for sure. And yeah, I mean, figured he was, uh, he was probably either first or second in the available outfield prospects available. So that's available prospects available. I am the president of the redundancy club of redundancy. I yeah. Don't know if you that's pretty, that. re that's pretty redundant. What you just yeah. said there. <laughs> All right. Well, you got Evan Carter and for good reason, he's a heck of a player. I tell you, I, um, you know, of course, we're a little jaded, but I was certainly rooting for Marcus Semien. And early in the World Series, he was very quiet and, all, I mean, pretty much in a slump. And yeah. then he just woke up. And so a uh, three-run homer last night, two-run homer tonight, um, and uh, Jonah Heim as well. So as I'm watching these two two guys who, you know, certainly, as you can see on the thumbnail, we're picturing in green and gold. Um, it got me thinking about just kind of what a drag it is to be an A's fan, because as soon as you, and we've made light of it, but like, as soon as you start to get into somebody, you got your Travis Buck Jersey on, yeah. um, you know what I mean? Then, uh, something happens, man. We've got, we go into this rebuild mode or in this case, tear it all the way down mode this last year and last couple of years has been horrible. And it's just, like you said, it's wash and repeat, or as we said at the beginning. So I, um, I thought what we would do is taking the entire John Fisher regime, which started in what, 2005? Yeah. Okay. That's when he became sort of the principal owner, right? Right, um, yep. Knock off those first five years or whatever. Let's just look at the last 10, okay? Because what are we at? I mean, from 05 to now, we're almost at uh, – 20 years for him. Yeah, wow. Coming up on it. Yeah. Yep. So we'll just look at the last 10 because that's, that's in our memory banks a little bit more. I think some of these older deals you're like, well, you know. so uh, what I, I can already tell you looking at the number of deals, there's a bunch I completely forgot about, yeah. but we're going to go through these and maybe what we can do is keep track. Good deal, bad deal. You know, did, did David Forrest, Billy Bean, under the John Fisher rules and regs, did they did they do a good deal for the A's, or did it uh, did it stink to high heaven? Okay, and is it typical of what they usually do, or is it out of the ordinary? All of that, yeah. and I know you're you're real good at that. You're like a general manager in training, so <laughs> that's why I wanted you on tonight. So we'll break it up because we're not going to get through all of it. So we'll go. 2014 to 2018 tonight. And then in our next episode, we'll do, if you're available, otherwise I can wait, but we'll do 2019 to 2023 and just see if there's a trend. That'd be fun. <laughs> if, if it was it worse before, is it worse now? All of that, we'll get into it. So we're going to save Matt Olson, Matt Chapman in the, the more recent stuff uh, for the next episode, but 2014. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of where it all really sort of started. So we'll talk about that in just a minute, but right now, I need you to know that if you're like me and you're watching your team completely crap the bed on Monday night football, then at least you could make it a little more fun by hanging out with the folks at FanDuel. That's of course, America's number one sports book. And right now, if you're a new customer, well, you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. For those who don't know, Ian, explain what a money line bet is, please. Money line would be uh, taking points out of the equation, just who you think is going to win straight up. Straight up. Yep. The easy bets, right? Or it should be easy, easier, because you're yeah. not having to deal with points. There's no handicapping. All right. Sure. So 150 bucks if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, 
Well, there's no better time to get in on the action. Do it right now. Jimmy Garoppolo, you got to go. Just a quick aside. I'm a very happy guy today. Christmas came early. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Me yeah. We, ne one neither one of us are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For you. Yeah. It was like 10 o'clock last night. Yep. Out. <laughs> it's over. Anyway, we'll talk about Josh McDaniels later. Anyway, a wide range of betting options. So you can do spreads. You can do overs, unders. Uh, you can do the player props. Those are fun. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with FanDuel. Get to Garoppolo, official partner of the NFL. AOC is going to get a shot. I kind of like that. Love it. I'm here. Well, he's already had a shot, but I'm at this point, I figure, you know what? Play the kid, right? Just let him baptism by fire at this point. What else, what else, what else, you what else do? can you do? <laughs> right. So we're going to talk about the A's and their deals, those A's and their deals. And in this particular instance, uh, we're going to start off with July 2014. And boy, it was a big deal, too. A lot of players involved. The Chicago Cubs traded right hand pitcher Jason Hamill and right handed pitcher Jeff Smarja to the A's for shortstop of the future, is what everybody said. At the time, Addison Russell, right? Plus center fielder Billy McKinney, who I think ended up finding his way back to the A's, and right handed pitcher Dan Straley and some cash. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that one. So, Jason Hamill, first of all, the A's did need pitching. They were trying to make up for what they considered to be their, their weakness going into that, that postseason. Was Hamill a good pickup? Yeah, you had pretty much the consensus best two starting pitchers available uh, from the same team at the deadline. So yeah. the fact that, well, you had the Lester move, so that was separate. That had already been done at that point. Um, we know, I think I think actually that's going to be next because this happened okay. on July 5th. So it was, ham it was this deal first. Okay, okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, so the two available best starting pitchers uh, went in the same deal. So that was massive at the time. Uh, the A's were dealing with uh, just kind of some pitchers running out of gas and also ineffective, you know, so they, they, they ended up replacing 40% of their starting rotation in one move for a guy that they were pretty sure was going to be fairly good, you know, in Addison Russell but not really hurt elsewhere in that. That was just not a very good deal from a Cubs fan perspective, especially in retrospect. But at the time, it looked light anyway. I don't. I really don't know why they didn't make two separate moves, but I was definitely all for it, man. <laughs> it was a great, great move for us. Sure, I was very happy when we snagged both these guys, and I was more of a Smarja guy. Then I was yep. a Jason Hamill guy, but I think, you know, if you look at the stats now, we have the, the, obviously we have the benefit of hindsight, right? Sure. Um, you look at it now and you're like, well, you know, they were both better than average and they probably both yeah. had quite, quite a bit to do with the A's making it to the postseason. Now uh, it was still one of those games where you had to, you know, win or go home. And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but the next deal was, uh, so that's a win for the A's, right? We're going to count that as a win. Yeah, especially when you consider the fact that Samarja had another year of control. Um, that was massive. And that, right. as we will cover down the road here, <laughs> shortly down the road here, that ended yeah. up paying off way bigger than anyone could have ever expected. Yep. Okay, so that's a win. Uh, next trade was at the deadline. It was the 31st of July. And the Boston Red Sox, in a big surprise move, traded their ace left-handed pitcher john lester uh, plus left fielder johnny gomes and some money to the oakland a's for i think anybody at the time would have said their best player joanna yeah. cespedes right fan favorite certainly the big power bat in that lineup and uh, i think a lot of people felt like he was a a clubhouse force as well like he was somebody that everybody kind of liked to hang out with and uh, just a oh, good yeah. guy, you know, the, even, even, even with the language barrier. Yeah. Cuban right. missile, they called him. Okay. And we sent that missile all the way to Boston. And again, <laughs> hindsight's 2020, but, uh, 
looking at that trade, that's the one I always hear about, like, you know, that that was just a major mistake. And I just wonder, uh, without John Lester, if the A's would have made it to the postseason. Yeah, he pitched pretty well down the stretch. I mean, the whole team kind of like collapsed in the second half, which yeah. was wild because even when they made the deals and that hadn't started yet. <laughs> so you're thinking like, wow, like if they're really going for it, like the Oakland A's of all teams are going for it. And man, yeah, I, get, I mean, again, hindsight being 2020, I, I don't know if they make it there without John Lester. So Right. That was huge. Uh, Gomes had some pretty clutch at bats down the stretch too, but I mean, you know, I, I as an A's fan, I tend to shy away from buying uh, jerseys of any current players. The Cespedes jersey, though, with the four-year, thirty-six million dollar deal that we signed him to, I definitely had a Cespedes jersey and wore it proudly, and I, that was I, th that I was think I, I think I got that for you, didn't I? I think you did. Yeah, it was, the, it was the yellow one, the alternate jersey, the one they uh, yeah. I think they wore to the All Star game. Yeah. The yeah. or yeah. Well, and again, hindsight being what it is, now I look at it and I go, eh, the trade maybe was about even, really, because or yeah. maybe even maybe even an advantage A's because again, do you even get to the playoffs without John Lester? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he was seven seven and four. Uh, lost a couple of close games though, so he could have just as easily been, you know, eight and three. He could have been, you know, nine and two. Yep. ERA right. was super. It was like two point three. And then I watched that playoff game against the uh, Royals, and I know that's that's one of those that, you know, Athletics Nation doesn't even want to talk about. Yeah. But um, I forgot that he pitched as deep into the game as he did. He was in the eighth inning when they finally started to get to him. And at that point he's over a hundred pitches. And I felt like, well, if the bullpen does their job, they strand a couple runners and we're out of this. And then we play to our strengths, but that didn't happen. Instead, there was a fire that was lit, uh, you know, right away. And I think that uh, yeah. any chance of that game being ours, I think went out the window after we made the, the pitching change, which again, you know, we're watching all this stuff 10 years later. And it's easy yeah. to go, well, I'll he pitched see. great. He pitched yeah. fantastic, but, you know, couldn't throw to first. And the only reason they were in the game is because he he had the yips. I mean, that that's the only reason the Royals are even in the ball game to begin with. Yeah. So it's like gift and a curse. He pitched well, but he couldn't hold runners on first. So. And we had a catcher who wasn't able to throw anybody out either. So there was yeah. that. Re remember, <laughs> Soto, Soto couldn't uh, couldn't play. So we ended up with yep. Derek Nor Norris behind the plate. Okay, it's moving on. We're uh, we're in. So we got two wins, really. Or actually, I'd call that one almost a tie, right? Maybe that's even. What do you think? I think the fact that that they still had a couple of years of control on Cespedes probably skews that the other way. So it's a I, loss. I don't know. Okay, but I mean the fact that we made it to the playoffs and may not have got there. I mean, you gotta. I don't know, man. Maybe if he would have made a little deeper run, then that'd have been a win. But yeah, at the time, uh, uh, <laughs> at the time, man, you got a rental of John Lester and Gomes, which, I mean, he's okay, you know. Well, the thing with Johnny Gomes is he looks a lot like Charles Manson, so that's what. <laughs> yeah, that's where terrifying. I, Positively yeah, he's got terrifying. he's got scary eyes. <laughs> you know? He used to he used to give me the creepies. Anyway, uh, end of August, we do another deal. The White Sox uh, trade first baseman Adam Dunn and some cash to the A's for a guy whose name shall forever live in infamy, Nolan Sandburn. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so we got Adam Dunn for a minute, and I don't know. Did that matter? No. I think he hit, like, 140. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like he was washed completely. He was washed when he like that whole year. I don't yeah. even know what we were thinking. We're looking for like another, you know, bench bat at that point. But well he didn't um yeah, he didn't he didn't hit like he hit, you know, in Chicago. And you're right. We were looking for somebody to maybe come in late in the game. Uh I mean defensively he was a liability anyway, right? Always, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Nolan Sandburn ended up being nothing either. So I, and to me, that's just a wash. It's like neither team really won that deal. I, don't I mean, think. yeah. A for effort. 
So I bet I Adam Dunn. I bet Adam Dunn sold some jerseys. I think he sold one to uh, my brother for sure. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, by the way, just for the record, his last name is also Dunn, spelled yeah, the same right. in everything. <laughs> um, and then, not surprisingly, on October 9th, John Lennon's birthday. Uh, don't ask me why I know that. The A's uh, released Adam Dunn. Surprise, surprise. So yeah. he was there from the end of August till the beginning of October. Nice to know you. Johnny Gomes. <laughs> Johnny Gomes decides to become a free agent at the end of October, as does Jason Hamill, as does John Lester. So much for that trade. Yeah. Uh, Jed Lowry also. And the A's spend some money in November. Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, that was only appropriate because Country Breakfast was coming to town. How much money did they pay Billy Butler? Wasn't it like, wasn't that a $10 million a deal? Three, yeah, three years, $30 million. Yeah, and I think that was one of those where they were tearing the team down. Um, I think they were trying to get above the minimum salary so they could get revenue sharing. So ultimately, like, it's probably a wash. Right. Honestly, it was the stupidest deal in history, right up there with the other $10 million deal for Ben Sheets, but forgot about that one. Other ones. <laughs> well, just in case you thought that, uh, you know, they maybe had their heads in the wrong place with the whole Cespedes deal. Well, the, you know, the A's came right back and said, well, look, let's, let's make it all better for you uh, by trading Josh Donaldson to Toronto for Sean Nolan. Brett Lowry, Kendall Graveman, and Franklin, he's going to be a star. Barreto. Yeah, nope. a 19-year-old lottery ticket. Yeah, hello. That's a loss. That's a big loss. That's a capital L. That might be the biggest ever. Might be, yeah. He I don't get around why... won the MVP in 2015. So I was going to say, I don't get it, but of course I do. It's salary. I mean, he was, he was going to get a payday. So they... They had to get rid of him before he would be making. Well, he wasn't a free money. agent. No, exactly. <laughs> I remember you said that at the time, and I sent you a picture from the gift shop at the Coliseum, and they, they were blowing out the Donaldson jerseys, and I was just like, "This is ridiculous." You know, first he had another Cespedes, year left. Right. <laughs> like what? First Cespedes, <laughs> then then Donaldson, who I really, I thought just to me, he was just the epitome of that team. I mean, I just thought he was. He was blue yeah. collar, you know, he was a little rough around the edges. He was fiery. I liked sure. all that. Played great defense and certainly could hit. And then uh, we had a couple more deals before the year was over because you would need to. So they traded Brandon Moss to Cleveland for Joey Wendell. Mr. Wendell. Yeah. That was right on time. I mean, Brandon Moss was hitting the, hitting the wall. They didn't know it yet, but. I mean, it was one of those kind of eerie things that the A's tend to do where they trade the right guy at the right time. Right. So. But Joey Wendell ends up never being a big league piece for the A's. So Not for us, no. <laughs> Not for no. us. <laughs> so maybe he helps later on down the road. I don't want to give away the the, the end here, you know. <laughs> um, okay, and then we trade Smarja, who we were just talking about. They had control. They let it go because they traded Smarja and – Michael Yanoa, you know, I'm going to be a White Sox. Yes, we yeah. do know that. Off he went for Chris Bassett, Josh Fegley, Rangel Ravelo. Is it Rangel or Rangel? I think it's Rangel. And yeah, uh, I think it's some, Rangel Ravello. Yeah, it's not Ravelo. I thought it was Ravelo. It doesn't matter anyway. Okay. It doesn't matter because he's Mr. It doesn't matter. Chris Bassett mattered. Josh Fegley mattered for a minute. And then there's this guy at the very end of the deal that nobody really thought a lot about, shortstop by the name of Marcus Simeon. Yeah, one of the worst defensive uh, shortstops in the league that year. Just an yeah. absolute butcher in the field. Yeah, yeah you then, talked uh, about J Walker. John Lester. You said John Lester had the yips. Hello? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that guy couldn't throw to any base. First base, second base. I don't even know how he just didn't DH. But no. they, they, to the A's credit, they, they were patient. Ron Washington worked his magic. And the guy's a stud, been a stud on both sides for a very, very long time. Yep. And we just saw that on parade during the World Series. So you're right, though, at the beginning, it was like, well, and, and 
He's probably the most yeah. famous Ron Washington pupil of them all, right? Josh okay. Donaldson, I mean, converted Another catcher. Another one. Yeah, he was a catcher. Yeah. Turned him into a third baseman. Oh, and yeah. Let's not forget Scott Hatterberg, the picking machine. Scott Hatterberg, I was about to say the same thing, yeah. It's very difficult. Wash yeah. is the man. Yeah, it's a great scene. That's my favorite scene <laughs> in Monday. Not that hard. Tell him, Wash. <laughs> yeah, it's extremely difficult. Okay, on the 11th of December, the uh, the Rockies traded left fielder Mark Canna to the A's, which is cool. He was a Bay Area kid, so to see him come home was neat. And in exchange, we sent them right-handed pitcher Austin House. Yeah, who, he that's a win. pretty pretty much bet the house, right? So. Um, I'm up to four wins and two losses at this point. Not bad. I don't think anybody knew how big of a, a how big of a piece Cano was going to be for us, and how just how long he would stay with the A's. I mean, in our world, <laughs> the dude was here forever. <laughs> yeah, it was an eternity. Yeah. Okay, one one more deal, and we're going to take a break. Okay, the A's on December eighteenth, twenty fourteen, traded catcher Derek Norris and. Right-handed pitcher Seth Streck. You know who can't say his name either? Ken Korak. <laughs> Seth Streck. Streck. Uh, to the Padres. And in return, we got Jesse Hahn and right-handed pitcher R.J. Alvarez. I think that's a loss, honestly. Derek Norris gave him some good at-bats in San Diego. We he did, We didn't get anything yeah. out of Jesse Hahn. I mean, he got hurt. Missed like yep. half a season. Like, it was like a fringe six starter type. Like, yeah. It's kind of like nobody else in that deal mattered except Derek Norris. He was right. the only one at the end of the day that, and so that's a win for San Diego. All right. Yep. Uh, we'll get to 2015 in just a second. But first, okay, 2015, Tampa Bay trades the A's, Ben Zobrist, and Shortstop Yunel Escobar for center fielder Boog Pal. Great name, not the guy. <laughs> Shortstop Daniel Robertson. Great name, not the relief pitcher. And then catcher John Jaso and some money. Okay. What do you think of that deal? I know I was happy. Great. Yeah, great deal. Zobrist, uh, I, I don't know if he was ever as good as we thought he was going to be. Uh, turned around and ended up being a whole lot better for the. Uh, the Chicago Cubs, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, yeah, but not too bad. Um, you know, Escobar, I don't, did he ever play for us? I think we turned around and flipped him or cut him. I think they let him go. Yeah. Which I don't understand because he was a good bat at shortstop and we had just traded Addison Russell. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> right. And plus I grew up in a time when Boog Powell was a, a big dude <laughs> playing first base for the Orioles so when yeah. I see this, the new Boog pal, and he's an outfielder and he's kind of skinny, I was like, go away with that. So I was happy to see him go, you know? Yeah. And John, John Jaso, I was never a, a fan. I think you kind of were, though, weren't you? A little bit? Uh, I think I just wanted him to be John Jaha. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Uh, <laughs> starts with a John, ends with a J. Okay, then the Washington Nationals on the 14th uh, traded right-handed pitcher Tyler Clippard to the A's for, you are right, Ian, Yunel Escobar. Straight up flip. Yeah, great move, I think, because Clippard was the man. I love yeah. that guy. I liked him even more when he was closing games. I don't know why we didn't use him as the closer right away. He was, like, set up. And then yeah. they finally moved him to closer. I didn't. I, he was a set-up guy in Washington before that, so I, I don't know if they just didn't trust him in the ninth inning, but – Definitely excelled once he got there. I only wear glasses on the podcast because of Tyler Clipper, just so you know. Love that guy. Clip and save was the what they called it in Washington. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Nice to have him there. And so Escobar, just so you know, was, was with the A's for all of uh, four days. Okay. Yeah. Memory. All right. We got to pick up the pace here a little bit. We're running out of show pretty soon. And I hope we can oh. get this whole ep episode in. Uh, okay, April 8th. And by the way, we're doing this because we just watched the World Series and we watched Marcus Semyon and Jonah Heim take center stage and absolutely contribute to their team winning the World Series. And of course, yeah. you're watching that and you're going, yeah, it should have been us, right? So that's the whole exercise here. We'll go back and see how many of these actually work out for us. 
Cody Ross. A signed him as a free agent on April 8th, 2015. Yeah, and then on May on, on May 2nd, they designated him for assignment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. July 23rd, 2015, the A's trade Scott Casimir to the Astros. We get back the greatest mustache since Raleigh Fingers, Daniel Mengden, and catch up Jacob Nottingham. That would be an L, sir. <laughs> I was going to say, who's going to say it first, me or you? Okay. Yeah, uh, then right. on the 27th of July, we traded Clip and Save, Tyler Clippard, and some cash to the New York Mets for a pitcher who, boy, you, you remember the Casey Meisner era, don't you? Okay, maybe not. What? <laughs> yeah. So Tyler Clippard, and you know, we, we barely knew you. Then, just when you were getting used to Ben Zobrist, uh, the A's flipped him along with some money to the Royals to get right-handed pitcher, not Oakland Raiders quarterback Aaron Brooks, and a left-handed pitcher by the name of Sean Manaya. Got to be a win, but uh, again, man, like, yes, that's one more move down the road, but what a key part of the Cubs World Series. Yeah. So we thought he was maybe done or on the downside. He had one more little bit of magic left, but we we weren't going to compete, and that's why he was gone. So I just liked that the guy could play every position. I felt like you know we hadn't yeah. had somebody that was that much of a Swiss Army knife in years. So just and they they could hit. You know you'd have these yeah. utility guys that would hit like two eighty. Uh, I mean I'm sorry, we hit like one eighty, and yeah. you know they're great defense, but. You know, to me, I think in today's game, you know, you got to be able to do it from both sides of the equation. You, do, you don't see a lot yeah. of good glove, good glove, no hit players anymore that aren't mm -hmm. named Nick Allen. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, September 10th, 2015, the Dodgers say, let's do some work here. Let's give you Daniel Colum and uh, we gave them some money. Well, what do you think? <laughs> Who was that for? Who was uh, who was coming back to us? Uh, we got Daniel. They oh, got we just gave money. Them money. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't have a lot of that, but <laughs> right. One thing I noticed with him is that he stuck around for a long time, but um, most of his time with the A's was spent hurt. You know, he was injured yeah, quite a I bit. Don't, I don't really remember him pitching a whole lot. <laughs> well, because he was hurt. A lot. Yeah. And, and, you know, but he did obviously have a, a, a good career after. So, you know, Minnesota Twins fans are pretty happy with him. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, I mean, I th Sean Doolittle, I think, was closing by this time. Right. So I don't know if you needed him. Wouldn't have mattered yeah. anyway. Didn't stay healthy. Uh, Jesse Chavez, uh, we traded him to Toronto. We got a guy named Liam Hendricks in return. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> yeah. I do <laughs> remember, though, work. we did a uh, charity event uh, for the ALS project, and Liam was there, and uh, Liam's wife, and I can't remember her name, but just sweetheart, and he's great. And, you know, I said something about, you know, because he was doing really well, and I said, man, so you, you, you're you just on fire, and we love it. We'd love to see you come into the games. And she said, yeah, you weren't saying that last year. <laughs> he was – he was getting booed off the field last year. And that's the Man. life of a clo closer, you know? By the way, yeah. he's he he's still got a chance to uh, stay in the game and, and make an impact for the White Sox or, or somebody. So we're going we're gonna to still hold out hope that uh, he's not done. But, yeah, that's a win. On November 25th, the Houston Astros trade their second baseman, Jed Lowry, to the A's for right-handed pitcher Brendan McCurry. Yeah, that, that'll work. Anytime Jed Lowry suited up in green and gold, it was a good day for us. So. <laughs> right. How many times did we get him? Three? Three, or two? yeah. Okay. Three, Three, for sure. Because he came back after he went to the Mets and got a bunch of money to play seven games or whatever he played. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Okay, uh, December – oh, we uh, – Daniel uh, Colum was uh, designated for assignment – at Thanksgiving, yeah. November 25th. So there you go. Thanks for nothing. Yeah, but he came back. And I think he was back like once, maybe twice. Yeah. And a lot of time, 
a lot of time injured. San Diego Padres traded a guy whose name I never could pronounce, and I'm not even going to try now. And first baseman Yonder Alonso, there's the key, to the A's in exchange for Drew Pomeranz, who ended up being a pretty good pitcher for them, uh, left-handed pitcher Jose Torres, and a player to be named later, whose name I still don't know. But, yeah, it's how do you say this guy's name? Mark I think Rosinski. it was Zepchinski. I think it's Zepchinski. Oh, Zepchinski. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, we got the better of that Unless deal, it was right? Repchinski. I don't remember. I don't remember whether the uh, R or the Z was silent. Didn't we get the better of that deal just because of Alonzo? Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he ended up manning first base through some dark days for us, but... Yeah. Uh, Pomeranz, uh, I did like him. I thought he was always kind of misused. And then they figured that out later when he was with Colorado. But that's yeah. where he should have been the whole time. Right. Well, we traded him to the Padres. December 8th. Yeah. Another John Lennon date, but this isn't a good one. Uh, A's trade right-handed pitcher Evan Scribner to Seattle in exchange for that household name, Trey Cochran Gill. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> Definitely. Dang it. You know, I wonder if at the end of these, especially this many years re removed, if Billy Bean is just like, did you have to bring that up? Right? <laughs> yeah, probably. Because this would have been all under Billy's control at that time. Yep. Um, very next day, we traded Brett Lowry, who was going to be the answer after Josh left, uh, to the White Sox. And in exchange, we got... J.B. Wendelkin and left-handed pitcher Zach Irwin. Yeah, I mean, if you got anything for him, that's a win. Anything for Lowry? Yeah, anything yeah. at all. Like put a one of those like put a soda machine in the locker room type deals, you know? Yeah, didn't he get um, he got involved in a big like a big fight, didn't he? Like, wasn't there a beanball war with him in the middle of it? Yeah, he. I just remember him being extremely bloodied. I don't remember who that was even with, but somebody definitely like cold cocked the heck out of him. <laughs> Probably an A's fan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where were you? Uh, December, uh, what was the date? December 11th. And the A's signed a free agent. Whoa, we never do this, but we did. We signed Ryan Madsen to a free agent deal. Yeah, that's a good pickup. Closer, right? Yeah. That's a win. Then the Brewers trade this guy named Chris Davis to the A's. Uh, Crush comes here for Bubba Derby and catcher Jacob Nottingham. Yeah, I'll take that 247 and 40 bombs a year every single day. Every single year for like four every in a row. Single year. Right. Okay, then uh, moving along through 2016, we signed free agent shortstop Will Wilson Alvarez to a minor league contract that never really amounted to anything. Nope. Then co country breakfast had to go. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This wasn't Billy Butler. I'm sorry. It was Billy Burns. I get my Billy's confused, but yeah, it was Billy Burns, speedy little center fielder to yeah, the Royals I mean, I think that's center a loss. fielder. We got Brett Eibner in return. Yeah, that's a loss. Um, Billy Burns. I liked him, man. He, he for a team that wasn't very good. He was fun to watch, man. He was. I've got uh, I've got Billy Burns' uh, feelings whenever I watch uh, Estuary Ruiz right now. It's like he he's the only reason that I, I want to watch the game, you know, at that point. And yeah. I think I have a I think I got a broken Billy Burns bat somewhere, somewhere. Wow. Okay, in in August we traded Josh Reddick, fan favorite, and Rich Hill. Forgot we even had him to the Dodgers. And in return, we get Frankie Montas, who, by the way, rumor has it, might be coming back. Uh, Grant Holmes and Jarrell Cotton. There's a guy who never lived up to the hype. Not at all, Or the all, expectation. Man. Yeah. So Frankie Montas for Josh Reddick is basically the deal. I don't know. Rich Hill did uh, did pretty well for the Dodgers, right? So Rich Hill did well for us, too. <laughs> well, I mean, that was right. But, that was tough. That was tough. Just, that was like the, ripping the rest of the scab off. <laughs> like, with with oh, a lot of blood. Trading, now we're trading Josh Reddick too? Okay, fine. As if we weren't heartbroken enough. Like, 
That was maybe some of the darkest days. So you got Montas After. back, who ended up being a, a very good pitcher. Right. Um, but Grant Holmes and Jarrell Cotton, you know, we lose that trade. Okay, and then Jordan yeah. Diaz, um, minor league contract in, in August. Then we released Billy Butler. And oh yeah, and that was on 9-11. Go figure. Yeah. You know, well, uh, there's all, all kinds of jokes I could throw in there, but I'll refrain. I don't know if you knew this or not, but that was my wedding day. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. No, it wasn't either. I'm sorry. I got married on 9 16 11. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, nine, yeah. This is 9 11 16. So sorry about that. A little anagram there for you. Sort of, maybe. Anyway, like I, Billy Butler, I only like just because I thought, you know, fat guys deserve a chance. In fact, guys need love too, man. Just not $30 plus, million dollars worth of love. Right. Plus people said I kind of look like him a little bit. So, you know, when I might, when I have my Billy Butler clothes on. Right. Yeah. We traded uh, Danny Valencia to Seattle. We got Paul Blackburn in return. We win that. You think so? Oh yeah. I think, I think Danny Valencia hit 30 home runs that next year. He didn't do much after that, but he had a, he had a bunch of home runs. He just, Nobody got along with that guy anywhere that he went. He was like a walking argument. <laughs> Everyone hated that guy. No, he wasn't. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. See if, see if you take the bait. <laughs> All right, couple more here, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna call it an episode. Um, I think Paul Blackburn's a piece right now. I think he's somebody we we should be able to get something really nice in return for. I think, or. He becomes the ace of our staff, but and I'd be okay with that too. I know that's the expectation. Uh, January 2017, we signed Rajay Davis. Loved watching that guy too. And then here's my favorite little, uh, on the 18th of January, Trevor Plouffe is signed as a free agent. Okay. On yeah. June 15th, 2017, the A's designate Trevor Plouffe for assignment on June 17th, two days later, they trade him to Tampa Bay. <laughs> yeah. I remember so, that. I was like, what? We got something for that guy. Cause he was a, he was a pretty highly touted guy for a while there with Minnesota. And like, he looked like he might be pretty good. So we got him. I was like excited to get him and then he just didn't do anything. We yeah. DFA'd him. I'm like, well, there he goes. And then, oh, magically, like they got something for him. I'm like, wow, what a, what a move. Like you got so, something. Yeah. You, I was just going to say he was there for five months and you got something out of it. So that's not bad. Yeah, uh, June 25th, 2017 kind of hurt because that was the day that the Milwaukee Brewers claimed, I believe in Stephen Vogt off waivers from the A's. Yeah. It was like the I last think he, remaining piece. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. And you talk about a fan favorite who I, I wouldn't be surprised if someday isn't the manager of the A's. You know, I'd love it. It'd be great. Yep, I think it would be. Um, Ryan Madsen gets traded along with Sean Doolittle. So let's just trade away, you know, our entire bullpen to the right. Nationals. We get a reliever back by the name of Blake Trinan, who was very good for a while. And Absolutely. a left-handed starting pitcher by the name of Jesus Luzardo, who has been a great pitcher for the Marlins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sheldon Noyce. So. Yeah, we won that trade for sure. Yeah. But there's no question about that. Uh, Trinan ended up being good for several years and had one kind of hiccup year, and we didn't really get anything for him. But then he found it again with the Dodgers. So it's like, man, like, that. <laughs> I remember looking at like on Twitter when they would show like uh, those mirror image things where they show like two pitches at once. And this yeah. dude would tunnel pitches like the first 50 feet. His pitches looked exactly the same. And then the last 10 feet, six inches, they went in about two it. opposite directions and two and yeah. a half feet of break. It's like, what is this? Like, he's a wizard. That guy was Plus one of my favorite, favorite people to watch pitch. Super nice guy too. Really nice guy. And, but you couldn't tell that when he was on the mound because he always looked mad. Yeah, right? definitely intense. But sweetheart of a guy. Um, now you say that it's a win, but what about Sean Doolittle with the Nationals? I mean, he was, and Ryan Madsen, both. 
I mean, didn't didn't Doolittle pitch them to the World Series? I wasn't either closer. Yeah, I think that he. Uh, I'd have to look at it, but I think he ended up kind of dealing with injuries for the rest of his career out there. Like there was a lot of times when he just didn't wasn't able to. But yeah, I mean, he had he wasn't completely washed or anything. I mean, they got something out of him. They just didn't get Blake Trinan or Jesus Lazardo out of him. Like there you go. Yeah, the the sum of what we got back was better than what what they got out of Doolittle. In July on the 21st, we signed Chris Carter to a minor league contract. Already had had his time with the big big league team at that point and never, unfortunately, was that guy. Ended up being Chris Davis was that guy, right? Right. Then we trade Sonny Gray and Future Considerations, who was not much of a ball player. I don't know if you ever saw Considerations play, but he was – it was not that good. Uh, to the Yankees for Dustin Fowler, center fielder, speedy, but uh, never really amounted to anything. James Caprillion and Jorge Mateo. You knew I was a I was a Jorge guy from day one. I thought he was going to be that dude. Yeah, and I pulled like a never triple husband. relic out of a pack for you. I think I get, I'm not sure if I even gave that to you. Maybe I'm blowing your Christmas present right now, but. Yeah, I got, I got a, a signed Jorge Mateo uh, with jersey patches. So I don't know hook, if I ever hook, gave that to you. It's hook, 40, a bro, h- hook a father up. How about that? <laughs> a- Adam Rosales gets traded to the Diamondbacks for Jefferson Mejia. Colorado Rockies trade Sam Mole to the A's for the famous player to be named later. We trade Rajay Davis to the Red Sox. We get back Rafael Rincones. Uh, the Astros trade outfielder that nobody knew about by the name of Ramon Laureano to the A's for right-handed pitcher, Brandon Bailey. Wow. Hello. That's yeah, a win. Like it was going to look like it was going to be like maybe the biggest win that we've talked about for a while. Yeah. It was a laser. Pirates claim left-handed pitcher, Sam Mole off of waivers from the A's. We sign free agent, right-handed pitcher, Yusmero Petit. That was a great signing. Is that guy, that guy rubber arm pitch every yep. day? Does yep. Uh, Joey Wendell, we finally get rid of trading him to the Tampa Bay Rays for a player to be named later. So, there, there's that answer tip from earlier. How'd that trade work out? Well, there you go. Not good. The St. Louis Cardinals do a big favor, uh, on a humanitarian level and at the same time give us a Bay Area kid who I just love to watch play. And then, of course, got to know him and his dad, Mike. and uh, Stephen Piscotty comes to the A's December 14th, 2017 for second baseman Max Schrock and third baseman Yero Munoz. That'll be a win. I think that's a Piscotty win with a capital P. Tampa Bay trades catcher Jonah Heim to the Oakland A's on December 19th. Yeah, I've heard that somewhere. Huh. And that and that's the end of 2017. We were going to do 2018 tonight, but... Honestly, this took longer than I thought it would. So we'll call it a wrap right here. But when we get back together, we'll just zip through 18. And then we'll get to 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And Matt Chapman, Matt Olson, oh. Sean Murphy. All of those deals are still to come. At this point, though, and remember, this is the Billy Bean era. If there ever was a Billy Bean era, we're at 17 to 9 at this point. I think that's the clear demarcation point. Yeah, if you're in in a, a little preview of what's to come on the next one, yeah, that line is very apparent. <laughs> Where he said, "All right, guys, best of luck, president of baseball operations now. So handle your business." This yeah. is David Forrest. He'll be your pilot the rest of the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks, Ian. I know it's it's late where you are, and heck, it's late where we are. But we wanted to wait and see if the Rangers were going to wrap this up, and they certainly did. Congrats to the Texas Rangers and to uh, Marcus Semien, of course, uh, Jonah Heim. Who am I forgetting? Robbie Grossman, right? And even on on the other side, uh, uh, we had Jace Peterson over there for for Arizona. And, of course, Dave McKay, always a soft spot for him, a former Mm -hmm. Oakland A. Um, So World Series is over. That means, of course, we're going to get renderings any minute now of this Vegas stadium. So. (laughs) We'll be, we'll be talking about that, and uh, we're going to go through those other deals and find out if they were certainly worth 
uh, what we thought they were worth at the time anyway. Did we win? Did we lose? At this point, Billy Bean's looking pretty good. 17 and 9. That's that's a decent record. Very good in fact. Um, thanks for making us your first listen or even your last listen. We always appreciate that. Give us a like and subscribe if you can to the channel. This is Locked on A's. That's Ian Coy. I'm his pop, Wayne Coy. Thanks for being here. Till next time, you keep on swinging.